actually fake, not last. He only says that to her too. Uh, Rachel, yes. No one knows how to say her last name. Kucha. <laughs> know about Rachel Kuchai is that she just really has a courageous heart and she might be a little obsessed with drinking LaCroix so when she's not working at Olga's you'll probably find her just cracking open a cold one with the boys. <laughs> Cheers. What you guys need to know about my friend Rachel Kuchai is that she works down yonder. Wah. Wah, 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 wah. One thing that you have to know about Rachel Kuchai is that she has an alter ego named Rick. Check it out. Now, Rachel Kuchai is speaking. Yo. Give it up for little Rachel Lil Coochie Mama. Give it up for Rachel Kuchai. Okay, um, my name is Rachel Kuchai, and I am a senior at Eisenhower High School. Um, I am super pumped to be up here tonight sharing my last words. I just wanted to start off tonight by giving you guys a picture of where I was at this time two years ago. Two years ago, I was sitting in the Edge basement at the Clothes House, um, probably sitting next to two people that I didn't know because I went there for a solid six months, never talking to anyone. Sorry. Talked to like five people probably, and I was sitting there watching one of the seniors give their last words, and I had this thought like, wow, I wonder if I'll ever be up there giving my last words. And then instantly I was like, nope, no way, never gonna happen. Good for them, God can change their life, but I had this disbelief that God was going to change my life. And that's because I um, didn't believe that he could change my life because I couldn't imagine that somebody loved me that much and cared about me that much that they wanted to change my life. And that um, came from my twisted view of an earthly father. You see, my parents got separated at a very young age and my dad was an alcoholic and he was very in and out of my life. Um, so as a kid growing up, I never really got that fatherly affectionate love that you get and my view of an earthly father reflected on my view of a heavenly father. And that led me on a journey, one that I'm still on today, a journey of discovery. And that's what I wanted to talk to you guys about tonight. This concept of we can't know him we can't know ourselves until we know him, and once we know him, we'll find ourselves. So that first point of we can't know ourselves until we know him, what do I mean by that? If we view God, um, if we don't view God as this loving heavenly father who speaks life into us and who loves us and who wants the best for us, how are we going to believe and accept the things that he says about us? For me, I was in this cycle of hearing what God said about me, having other people tell me what God said about me, and I'm like, okay, yeah. And then I, I would retreat right back to my old ways of what I believed about myself. And it wasn't until fall retreat of my junior year that I was spending time with him and I was just asking him, I was like, like God, why did this happen? Or where were you when this happened with my father? And I felt like he said that my earthly father may have left me, but he is my heavenly father and he loves me and he's always been with me and he's never going to leave me. And that right there led me on a discovery of who I was in him because we can't know ourselves until we know him and once we know him, we'll find ourselves. So that second point of once we know him, we find ourselves. Stepping into discovery of who we are in Him requires us to drop our expectations of who we want to be and drop who we think the world wants us to be. Think about this. If we only live by who God created us to be and believe that we were significant enough to walk in that, wouldn't that drop comparison? Wouldn't that drop feelings of not being enough? Wouldn't that drop our desires of wanting to be like someone else? We need to 
to look at him because he sees deeper into us than we see into ourselves and that anyone sees into us. He knows more about us than we know about ourselves and that anyone knows about us. He knows exactly how he wants to use us. So what's stopping us from pressing into that? We need to look at him because once we know him, we find ourselves. I want to look at this passage with you guys um, from 1 Corinthians 12, 14 to 20. It reads, yes, the body has many different parts, not just one part. If the foot says, I am not a part of the body because I am not a hand, that does not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear says, I am not a part of the body because I am not an eye, would that make it any less a part of the body? If the whole body were an eye, how would you hear? Or if your whole body were an ear, how would you smell anything? But our bodies have many parts, and God has put each part just where he wants it. How strange a body would be if it only had one part. Yes, there are many parts, but only one body. I think that passage paints a beautiful picture of how we're not all supposed to look alike, so stop looking to the left and to, to the right. Look to him and let him define you because he sees deeper into you and he wants to define you, so he wants us to press into how he sees us. Imagine how powerful that would be if we all operated out of our identity that the Lord says about us and we press in to how he sees us. When I think back to my sophomore year, sitting in the edge basement, I didn't even realize that I was significant enough to be a part of the body. I looked at everyone else and I saw myself as less than. But he spoke that truth into me that I'm less, not less than. None of us are less than and he sees each of us. So look to him because once you know him, you find yourself. And to wrap up tonight, I just want to give you guys a step that really changed my life with this, and that is just to spend time with him daily and let him renew your mind. Um, it's not just a one-time thing. It's an everyday renewal of your mind, receiving his perspective. Um, seek every day how he sees you, and in different moments, press in and be like, God, what do you want me to know? What do you want me to do right now? And underclassmen, I'm a senior, I'm leaving along with the rest of the senior class, so when I say this, I'm speaking to you guys that my hope for you as a body, as an edge community, is to walk obediently in this. Press into this daily. Know how he sees you. And once you know how he sees you, you'll be able to call that out of other people and encourage them so that we can have a culture of celebration, not comparison. So I just encourage you, walk in this daily and become so concrete in it that nothing can ever shake it. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> All right, first off, this, wait, are you crying now? No, I was, I had betting, I was betting with someone if she would cry. Um, no, she, uh, gosh, it's so crazy. Like, it is, it's so wild. You know what, um, I want to share a funny story over. The number, the number, the, the event I hate the most that we do every year is the Cedar Point trip. <laughs> and it's because um, you guys, like, run around and we never know where you're at. And it's terrifying. Um, but that was the trip that, like, Rachel went on and, like, had a deep conversation on the bus with someone and, like, changed her life. And so I always think about, like, you, God's always doing way more than you, than you know. Like, he's always moving. He's always doing more than you can expect. And it's just, it's so cool to watch Rachel, like, grow into who she's become. Uh, my wife uh, leads her small group, and so I've probably got an even deeper window into, into watching her develop and, and uh, you know, really shape into who God's called you to be. And one of the things I love too is um, Jen and I came from Michigan State. That's where we met. Uh, that's where we got the call into ministry and really sensing what God wanted to do with our life. Um, and one of my dreams was that I'd always be able to send up my mentor kids that we mentored, um, that they'd be ready and walking with him. And we sent up a few, and Rachel's going to be one of them that's really walking with Jesus. So go green. Uh, have fun. I love you. I'm proud of you. You're amazing. So 
hey, uh, I'm going to invite the band up right now, uh, and Annalisa.